Today we will be heading back to Cloud Ruler Temple to help Martin retrieve the second and third items he will need to open the portal. Make sure to grab the second item before the third, or it will cause a frustrating glitch. The first ingredient, if you remember, was the blood of a daedra. The second item is the counterpart, the blood of a divine. Now, the Aedra do not manifest in physical forms, nor do they have artifacts like the Daedra. So our only connection here is the one divine who started out as human. Tiber Septum himself. Martin sends us to Joffrey, who, as the Grandmaster, holds the secret that can solve this mystery, and he can be found walking the grounds outside. For the armor of Tiber Septim is in the shrine beneath the ruins of Sankator. This sacred site is overrun with evil spirits, so be prepared with all of your ghost-busting gear. This includes, of course, the usual silver, daedric, and enchanted weapons, destruction magic, or alternatively, the rough hands of a journeyman hand-to-hand -hand warrior. Just make sure you have enough ammo, repair hammers, or replacement gear as adversaries are great in number and quite tanky at higher levels. I was ill-prepared, but was able to find some enchanted weapons along the way. Since no followers can go inside, we are on our own and must face the long dark of Sanger Tor. I noticed that stealth works surprisingly well, and I needed that multiplier given my limited supply of arrows. Through this gate, we will find our first blade, which I didn't realize before enjoying a round of popping him into pieces. Let's, uh, more respectfully free this poor soul from his undead imprisonment. You have freed me. He shares the story of the ruins, the Underking, and his companions asking us to free them so together they can break the evil enchantment. Note that each of them will have a leveled magical item, and Rialis here dropped his amulet of Anse, which fortifies blocks. Also, the ancient Akaviri katanas can be used against the ethereal and dead, just letting you know. There's also a shield, a sword, and a claymore with awesome enchantments, so keep your eyes peeled as we head out to find Elaine, Kaznar, and Valdemar. Just keep walking until reaching the entry hall, opening to a number of paths to choose from and a few more enemies. There also seems to be no benefit to exploring underwater just to save you some time. Now, eventually we'll be heading here, but until then, let's start with the prison. Now, before we're even able to make it to blade number two, we need to get Mr. Kostov out of our way. Grab the warden's key off his cold, dead, undead body to open the door, unless of course you want to practice your lockpicking. You can skip most of these empty cells and continue on until you find the next blade. You're not actually required to speak with him, he'll just move on past you, but don't forget the chest or the shield that I totally just left on the floor. I can now confirm that if you try to come back for these items, they will have disappeared already, so um, you'll still find some decent loot though. Back in the main room, it is now time to go to the Hall of Judgment. Head northeast to find blade number three. After defeating him, he regains his bearings, then heads out, and he leaves behind an enchanted sword. I'll also wish I forgot. Um, instead of going back to the main hall, we can actually go straight southwest toward the catacombs where we will find our fourth and final blade and free him. If we continue on through the catacombs, it will lead us to a large room with one stone coffin as its centerpiece. Behind it, I found what I believe to be a randomized enchanted weapon that can be used against our phantom friends. We find another path into the antechamber, a secret, a dark way, and from here you could see the way into the tomb of the Riemann Emperors. We continue on through the giant door to see the cursed blades band together to complete their final mission and break the evil curse. The way is now clear and we are able to reach the armor, stained by the blood of Talos himself. We must now get this ancient relic back to his rightful heir. Which isn't me, so I better put this away. Having cleansed the ruins, our brothers can now go rest in Aetherius. And we must retrace our steps. Amidst the new books Martin is studying, you'll find a couple skill books, like the Refugees for Light Armor, and the Doors of Oblivion and Increases Conjuration. He's also discovered the next ritual item, a Great Welkin Stone. It's rumored that there is still one deep in the alien ruins of Miss Karkand. Be careful, my friend. And with that, we're sent off yet again to risk our lives. There are also plenty of your garden variety Welkin stones, so we should lighten our inventory before we go. We'll find our destination located between Kvatch and Skingrad, looking serene under the golden sun while we pick a few alchemy ingredients. And of course, there's that tribe of bitterfish goblins. Now, remember that glitch I told you about? You are actually able to enter these ruins before opening the Miss Karkad quest. Grabbing the stone prematurely will cause a glitch, and it makes the final battle very difficult, so uh, just please don't do that. Do this in order. Here you will find the goblins battling the undead within. 
This is yet another dungeon crawl full of tanky hordes guarding a rare artifact with a vengeful spirit at the end, and I really need to work on my quest prep. At the end of this path is a remotely locked gate, so let's just jump down. Clear out everyone. And then we'll head up to a small room with the elusive glowing button. We're also now able to open this door that we passed earlier, leading to the Cell Vanua, Vanua, Cell Vanua, um, section, where we can observe yet another skirmish. Ooh, another glowing button. And underneath this pokey Dutch oven, a Varla stone. This can be either used to charge all of the items in your inventory at once, or it can be used to put the local mom and pop shop out of business, if you really need the coin. Again, at level 25, I found some of the opponents quite beefy, especially these regenerating dread zombies. Once again, enchanted weapons are literal lifesavers, and I found fire to work pretty effectively. We look down to see yet another battle, but this time we'll take the stairs. There's decent loot to be found in a familiar looking button that apparently opens a gate blocking the Mormeth door. Okay, so we need to be up here, and for the very perceptive ones, these are in fact stone steps, but there's no way to activate them from down here, so we need to go back around. At last, we've made it to our prize, the Great Welkened Stone. And look, stairs! Oh. Okay, so we can't flee this fight, as leading these guys out of the ruins can actually cause a glitch, so just handle business. After defeating the Lich King of Miss Karkand, we can take his house key and head out. We'll find that a secret door in this stone wall has opened. The path on the right is blocked, so we must go left. Go up a couple flights of steps and through the door to reveal the shortcut to the outside world. Back in the temple, Martin is looking fine. We need only one more item. What? 